Welcome back designers. For those that don't know me, my name is Richard Carpenter, a web design illustrator. And in today's video, we're looking at part two of the stream animation. So without further ado, let's jump into After Effects and get started. Okay, so starting off from where we left off in part one, what we need to do is we need to prepare our artwork to be used in Adobe After Effects. So a couple of things that you want to make sure is that the artwork itself is in one group. And then what you want to do is you want to go to edit, copy, create a new document and then just paste that within the new document. Select the artboard tool and then just double click on the artwork and then the artboard will match the width and height dimensions of the artwork. And then you just want to save that file somewhere on your desktop ready to be used in After Effects. Okay, so once you're in After Effects, you want to create a new project and then create a new composition. I'm just going to call this Composition Sub Alert. And then you just want to use the preset HDTV 1080 at 30 frames per second. And then you want to create, change the duration to about 2.2 seconds. Import the Illustrator artwork by right clicking in your project window and going to Import File and then just select the illustrator file which you saved earlier onto your desktop. Select the artwork and just drag it onto the composition and then under the align panel we just want to vertically and horizontally align the artwork in the center. Move the time indicator to around 10 frames and then select the artwork layer and press the letter P on the keyboard for the position. And then you just want to select the stopwatch at its current position, move it back to zero, and then move the artwork just so it falls off the composition area. And then what that'll do, it'll create a quick animation of it sliding up. Next, we're going to want to add the rotation to the artwork so it rotates as it comes into view. So move to zero frames and then select the enable 3D layer and we want to spin the artwork on the Y rotation. So select the stopwatch to add a keyframe, move to 10 frames, and then change the number of rotations to four. And then what that'll do is it'll just rotate as it comes in. Also, you can increase the number of rotations if you want it to be a bit quicker, or you could re reduce the distance between the two keyframes. Also, as the artwork comes into view, we want it to do like a snapping motion. So we want it to come up and then snap down into position. So if we go to 15 frames, add a new keyframe, and then go back to the 10 frames, select a position keyframe and just move the artwork up so it spins into view and then snaps back down before staying there for a few moments and then disappearing so what we can do is we can easy ease these keyframes later on just to turn that into a snap so it comes up and snaps down so once it's snapped into place what we want to do is move forward to about 20 frames add a new keyframe so when it comes in it just basically stays there for a a couple of seconds and then if we move to about 22 frames we want to add another position keyframe only this time we're going to have it moving up just a little just like a little bounce and then it's going to disappear out of the shot so after 22 frames if we move over to 30 add another position keyframe and then just move that down again out of view so so far we have it spinning into view, snapping down, stops there momentarily, goes up and then before disappearing out of view. Next we just want to work on the timing and just try and improve the motion of the animation. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the second and third keyframes and I'm going to drag that to around the 15 frame mark just so after the spin it goes up straight and then snaps into place and then the third keyframe I'm just going to bring it a little bit closer so it creates more of a snapping motion 
and then I'm going to highlight the second and third keyframe right click and go to keyframe assistant easy ease or we can use the F9 keyboard shortcut and then I'm going to do the same on the bottom two for the rotation so F9 on the keyboard for easy ease so now with easy ease these keyframes what we can do is work on the timing try and improve the flow of the animation but the first thing I want to do is just turn this into motion blur so on the original animation it looked quite blurry and you can do that by just putting a little tick in the motion blur box so when we play the animation now it's got the motion blur effect on that so let's work on the time of the animation then so the first thing I'm going to work on is the snapping motion so if we select the two keyframes select the graph editor hold alt on the keyboard and use the mouse wheel just to zoom in and what we want to do is just try and improve this snapping motion so if you select the little yellow square and then just move it slightly towards the left and what that will do is it will just speed up the snap next if we select this green arch here this is the speed of the rotation and the speed that it comes into view so what we can do is select the first one and then just move that towards the right so it comes in quite quick tapers off and then obviously we've got that snapping motion there which is a lot better and then we can just do the same for the last three keyframes so if you make a selection around all three press F9 on the keyboard for easy ease and then select the graph editor zoom in by holding down alt and using the mouse wheel and then we just want to adjust the first part of the animation so I want it to go up quite quick and then exit quite quick and then we'll do the same for when it leaves so the animation goes up and then leaves the composition area okay so once you've adjusted the animation speed timing and you're happy with everything hopefully you should have something which looks like this and then one final thing that you might want to do is you might want to scale the object up or down depending obviously on your stream size so what we can do is we can right click the layers area and go to new null object and we'll just call this scale controller if you select the pick whip and then just pick with the artwork to the scale controller then what we can do is press s on the keyboard for scale and then we can just adjust the scale as we, as we want to and all you'll need to do is just change the starter position so you might just want to move that down a bit further and obviously the exit position That's it for this week folks, thanks for tuning in, if you like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up, if you want to stick around for more content hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next one.